Welcome to the Sampling for QI module of the Measurement for Quality Improvement series. This series of short videos has been created to support your QI learning on measurement and to build capability among family medicine residents, faculty and interprofessional team members of the Department of Family and Community Medicine at the University of Toronto, members of its Quality Program Committee, Community of Practice members, and the Quality Improvement Decision Support Specialist so that all can confidently use data for improvement. At the end of this module, you will be able to describe what sampling is and the rationale for using it in QI, identify various sampling strategies, establish a sample size based on QI sampling principles, and summarize reliability and validity in the context of QI. In the earlier modules of the Measurement for Quality Improvement series, one important message was that measurement enables us to decide whether the changes we are making to our systems are resulting in improvement. We know that, in order to learn and ultimately improve, teams need to measure. However, sometimes teams don't know when to stop measuring. Data collection, instead of improvement, becomes the goal, and teams get stuck on their improvement journey. In QI, a team needs to have just enough data to make an informed decision about the next steps. So to be able to move forward with learning, and ultimately to improving performance, we sample. The Healthcare Data Guide states that sampling involves making decisions about which data to collect and how much data to collect in order to aid the improvement effort. The authors point out that although there are times that the amount of data available is small, and therefore all of it can be analyzed, more often in healthcare we are working with a great deal of data. Sampling is a simple and efficient way of collecting just enough data. A simple analogy is provided in the data guide that illustrates the rationale for sampling. The authors suggest that sampling is like taste testing in cooking. When a chef is making a pot of soup, she adds a pinch of salt to improve the taste. To decide whether the added amount of salt is an improvement, the chef could eat the whole pot of soup. However, in reality, she will take much smaller samples to learn whether enough salt has been added. And one very important step for the chef is to stir the soup before she samples it. If she doesn't, and she takes her spoonful, from the spot where she dropped the pinch of salt, or if she misses the salt completely, her sample will not be representative of how the entire pot of soup tastes. This is an important lesson for sampling. The sample must be representative of the data or population under study. The same principle applies to our QI work. A primary care example, similar to taste testing soup, is when we want to do a chart audit to better understand our immunization rates. We do not have to audit all of our charts. We only need to review enough charts to be confident that we understand our current practices. And we need to ensure that the charts we review are representative of the patients in our practice. Often, one of the first questions asked during measurement work is how much data do we need or what about sample size? Those working in research will have used statistical methods to establish a sample size able to meet a desired confidence level. In improvement work, deciding on sample size is not as well defined as in research because data is most often collected over time. Instead of statistical calculations, establishing a sample size in improvement work is based more on certain characteristics of the improvement project. Five characteristics that affect sample size that are in, listed in the data guide include purpose of the data collection, type of data, the rate that the characteristic occurs, the practical consideration of resource availability, and how the data will be used. Let's look at each characteristic. When deciding on sample size, a team needs to first consider what the purpose of collecting the data is whether the data is collected for generating ideas, making comparisons, or testing a change will affect how much data gets collected. For example, if a primary care team is trying to identify options for improving adherence to exercise, 
in their clients with diabetes, they may want to survey a large sample to gather many creative ideas. Secondly, the type of data will influence the sample size. Is the data attribute or continuous data? Attribute data can be either classification data or count data. Examples of this are number of errors or pass-fail situations. Continuous data is data that can take any value within a range such as time, money, volume, or flow-through. A simple rule is that attribute data is counted and continuous data is measured. If your improvement data is attribute data, larger sample size are usually required. Thirdly, how often does the characteristic or element you are interested in occur? The more frequently the element occurs, the smaller the required sample size becomes. Fourthly, the ease of obtaining data and the resources required to collect the data will affect the sample size. The burden of collecting the data must not be greater than the value of the data for learning about our changes. And finally, the importance of the findings will affect the sample size. For example, if the findings are for the team's learning, then a smaller sample size would suffice. However, if the findings are to be used to influence others, such as senior management or funders, perhaps a larger sample size is necessary. Once we have figured out the amount of data to analyze, the team will have to choose a sampling method to figure out which data to look at. There are a number of different sampling strategies, of which we will discuss three. Simple random sampling involves selecting data from a database by using a random number list. The random number list can be obtained from a published random number table or generated from a computer or smartphone app. Here is a simple example of random sampling when the sample size is 20 but you have 350 patients who meet the criteria under study. For a simple random sample, each chart would be numbered from 1 to 350 and using the random number table or list, 20 charts would be selected according to the random list of numbers. A systematic random sample results from selecting data from a data set using a random starting point and selecting data at specified intervals. For example, if a team was sampling for a client experience survey, they might randomly start surveying clients starting with the sixth patient seen on a Monday morning and then survey every fifth patient after that. Systematic sampling is a method used to collect data at fixed time or count intervals. For example, every hour on the hour or every fourth patient. Systematic sampling is useful for a high volume process. It is used to gain a general picture of the performance of the process and to sample data over extended periods of time. And any time data is used, there are always questions about reliability and validity. The data guide states that concerns about reliability and validity in QI are translated into practical terms. Improvement teams will focus on developing measures that are focused on patient care, are meaningful for multiple users, acceptable to patients, respect confidentiality, and are feasible to obtain. In summary, quality improvement is about testing change over time. The power of measurement in QI arises from frequent sampling, resulting in time series data, which is usually displayed in run charts. In QI, we expect there to be complexity in the system, and in real systems, such as primary care, we cannot control all potential sources of bias. However, measuring frequently over time will demonstrate how the system is performing, and any bias in the system will be stable and will exist in all of our frequent measures. Compared to research, where attempts are made to control all sources of bias, and where substantial sampling is used in a comparatively narrow time frame, QI relies more on smaller sample sizes taken in real-world processes. The power of this process is in the repetition of sampling continuously, and we will learn even more through analyzing the patterns of variation seen. 
This concludes the sampling for QI module. As a result of this module, you should be able to describe what sampling is and the rationale for using it in QI, identify various sampling strategies, establish a sample size based on QI sampling principles, and summarize reliability and validity in the QI context.